my topic is uh, not that much technical. It's just uh, relating to the IEEE Footing Society Scholarship. So I'll be jumping to that. So before jumping on to that, uh, I want to briefly introduce myself, what I'm doing right now as a uh, IEEE uh, member and as a volunteer. I'm Nazine Aklam, the chair of IEEE Footing Society and IEEE Sensor Counseling Miami Section Joint Chapter. Apart from this, uh, 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 apart from this designation, I also work as the student editor at IEEE Footing Society Newsletter. I'm also the representative for, for the step and graduate trans, uh, transition representative for the IEEE Footing Society Young Professional Advisory Committee, and also the committee member for the IEEE Footing Society Professional Advancement Committee, uh, as well as the IEEE Women in Photonics Task Force member. Uh, I'm also uh, uh, holding the chair for the IGP Young Professional Miami Section Affinity Group and Women in Engineering uh, Affinity Group. Uh, so these are like little bit introduction of me. So going forward for today's agenda, so what we are going to focus, uh, I'm going to give a brief description of the IGP Photon Society, what IGP Photon Society offers so far, what are the hours types, what hours graduate student can uh, uh, apply for. And as I have a win the 2021 IEEE Society uh, graduate student scholarship, so I'll give a brief overview how, uh, what are the requirements, how you need to prepare your application to get the scholarship. So IEEE Photonics Society is a professional home for all the students, scientists, and engineers who are working on laser optoelectronics, photoelectronics technology for the betterment of benefits of the humanity. The purpose of this society is to like provide the member and the professional growth of, with the professional growth opportunity, publish journal papers, sponsor conference, and support for the local chapters as well as the student around the world, and also supports the outreach activities. IEEE Photon Society also focus on the diversity because IEEE Photon Society believes that diversity is essential for the innovation. Diversity is uh, include is uh, uh, it's included over the like providing uh, equal opportunity to the scientists and engineers regardless of the ethnicity, race, nationality, religion, gender, age, and identity. IEEE Photonics Society also made an initiative for the IEEE Pride in Photonics, which is a really a really good initiative to focus on the people who are work um, uh, in the photonics, uh, uh, the LGBT community. IEEE Photonics Society also have the uh, focusing group on IEEE uh, women in photonics uh, in collaboration with IEEE Women in Engineering. IEEE Photonics Society also gives the platform for the young professional and to help them to elevate in their uh, transition from the graduate student to the professional. Uh, so far, IEEE Photon Society has more than 130 chapters. Uh, this chapters provides the opportunities to network and promote professional growth within the photonics community. The purpose of this chapter is to fulfill the mission of the overall IEEE and enhance the members' growth and development throughout the life cycle. And also the retention of the uh, for, uh, members is also very much important for the IEEE Photonic Society because a graduate student may feel left, uh, like left alone after a completion of the graduation and then starting their professional life. So the retention of the, our member, own member is very important and focusing part for us as well. IEEE Photon Society chapters uh, has uh, so many uh, activities, including lectures, workshops, regional conference, hours, scholarship, student paper or poster count contest, local humanitarian and service level project work. IEEE Photon Society gives so many grants for not only for chapters or like scholarship, apart from this, there are so many other things like for, uh, for a regional chapter or a uh, for society chapter, they can request up to like $2,500 annually for their conferences or for their workshop or any activities uh, that should be done through a proposal. And if actually Photon Society finds a proposal is very interactive and very interesting, then they will fund the program. Apart from this overall, uh, for the IEEE Photonic Society, the, they have the overall grant of like around $30,000 USD for the Photonic Membership Counseling uh, uh, reviews and to approve all the chapter-related uh, chapter grants. 
Also, apart from this, I to be uh, Fortune Society gives a student enterprise award, and it's up to like it. It may vary, but it's up to like thousand or uh, one thousand five hundred dollar per project proposal. Based on the project, uh, maybe the proposal can be a little. Uh, the funding can be a little bit up or low. Uh, it, it depends on the actually the uh, how strong the proposal is and how strong the, uh, the conference or how strong the uh, workshop will be and how uh, that workshop is uh, going to uh, highlight IEEE Photoing Society's uh, mot motivation and uh, their mission and vision. IEEE Photoing Society also gives this step funding and uh, its amount is starting from $500 and uh, it's uh, uh, and uh, there is uh, like additional funding available for group over 25 Five. And uh, based, it's also based on the proposal and uh, how you are going to organize this state program based on that the funding can be adjusted. Uh, I do believe public society has this uh, funding outreach activity based on like women. I mean, focusing uh, mostly on women in photonics. I, it's starting from like $2,500. Still, it may vary based on the proposal you are writing uh, for the, to represent the women in photonics. Also, IEEE Photonics Society gives this travel grant, which is like to attend different IEEE Photonics Society related conference. It can be a uh, summer, summer tropical conference, it's a, a rapid conference, and IEEE flagship conference, conference IPC, which is uh, like a starting from today, it's happening right now. Uh, right now it's a virtual, so maybe uh, uh, this travel grant is not uh, available right now, but uh, for uh, in person conferences, this uh, uh, like you can like anyone can apply for this travel grant. Uh, during 2019, I got like three travel grants to uh, attend three different conferences, and which was like uh, I was like great. Apart from this uh, grant, IEEE Photon Society has uh, like several hours, but today I'm just going to focus on this IEEE Photon Society graduate student scholarship. Uh, so to get the purpose of this scholarship is to like promote the graduate students, especially who are at the last stages of pursuing their uh, graduate, like uh, uh, to complete their graduate studies, especially the PhD students. Uh, it, it could be a master's as well, but it should be like uh, uh, the last stage of, of the graduation. The students, uh, um, it's like it, uh, geographically, it's uh, supported by like America's uh, like reason one to seven to nine. Uh, like uh, it's from all the geographical uh, IEEE Photo and Society member. It, it doesn't like uh, uh, mean like uh, only uh, uh, the particular uh, reason is going to focus. No, you can apply, and uh, if your uh, application is strong enough, then definitely you will get the scholarship. To apply for the scholarship, what you need to do, you need to uh, list down several uh, requirements. First, you have to like uh, uh, listing down like all the related activities you have done so far for the IEEE Photon Society, especially uh, these activities could be the volunteer activities or could be uh, uh, what, what you have done to promote IEEE Photon Society's motors, visions, uh, something like that. So you have to list down those activities. Second, what you need to do is to write down your CV, uh, where you have to write down all of your degrees received, uh, including the received uh, dates. And then you have to like include all of your educational transcripts so far you have achieved. And then you have to write down a 300 word statement of purpose, which will not exclude like more than 300 words. And it should be focused on your research project interest, what, what is the background of the project, what potential impact can the project can do and uh, what so far you have achieved and how far you have to go and uh, uh, how the research will be continued and developed by the student over the rest of the project if you uh, if you are often if you get the scholarship so regarding the eligibility information you have to include your actually member number you have to include like when you have joined the IEEE Photoing Society, like uh, you took the membership for the IEEE Photoing Society, uh, your expected uh, date of submission of your thesis or maybe dissertation, your university name, your undergrad uh, grade point average and graduate grade point average. Those are the eligibility informations. Okay. 
Next, you have to include all of your publications. These publications will be in two categories. One is the IPS publication, that is IEEE Reporting Society based publication, and another one section will be like non IEEE Reporting Society based publications. Those uh, publications also you have to uh, categorize like uh, how many journals you have published, uh, how many journals you have published as a first author, and uh, how many uh, first author conference paper you have published. So uh, both for the IEEE Photon Society publication and non IEEE Photon Society publication, you have to uh, categorize this uh, uh, like a first authorship kind of a journal and conference paper. Then uh, you have to write down uh, like uh, the most significant paper and why that paper is significant, no more than 100 words uh, to like the more concise you are about your. Uh, paper the more you know about your work right so you have to like concise all the things all of your like importance of the project so that they can uh, have a overview of like which paper is important and why it is important this kind of fact and lastly you need to letter of recommendation uh, from the individual uh, uh, that's familiar with your uh, research background and your educational uh, credential. Uh, it can be your advisor, it can be your uh, faculty member, it can be your committee member, or it can be anyone from the IEEE uh, society as well. Uh, it, uh, but they should be uh, like known to your research work. That's the prime category. And uh, IEEE Photo Society has this uh, society newsletter, which is published bi-monthly. So if anyone is working on uh, IEEE, uh, like a uh, photo links, uh, Field, I will highly encourage to uh, to follow this newsletter. I'm also the editor for this newsletter as well. Uh, and uh, uh, if you have any interesting workshop, if you have performed any outreach activity based on photonics, uh, if you want to uh, highlight your photonics society chapter, please communicate with our staff member or the uh, uh, IEEE Photonics Society staff member, or you can communicate with me as well to highlight your uh, activities. And also, IEEE uh, this newsletter has a section where you can present your lab, what your lab is doing, how, uh, what kind of research you are doing, your introduction, your research background, those kind of things. So uh, I have attached a picture of mine working in my lab, like, uh, and uh, giving my uh, introduction of uh, my lab. So. Same thing can goes for you as well. If anyone is working on the photon spill, I will highly encourage to please take the advantage and highlight your lab as well. Uh, as I'm the uh, representative for the IEEE Photon Society Student Transition and Innovation Partnership Program, so this program is primarily focused on the value of like mentorship. Uh, IEEE Photon Society really, really uh, uh, like put emphasis on this part. Like you have this mentor and mentee kind of concept to help the student to uh, like communicate with uh, any advisor, like in, uh, so that they can be guided through, uh, especially for the conferences platform for the IEEE Photonics Society. If you if you attend any conference for uh, this IEEE Photonics Society, you will you'll see that uh, based on your research background, they will uh, allocate your mentor so that in the conference, you don't feel alone. You can talk to them. Uh, like uh, you, you can have to visit them with your so many technical question, your career building question, or maybe you can uh, ask them how you can uh, do the volunteering and other things. Also, this program uh, uh, supports the CV reviewing and mock interviewing, salary negotiation. We uh, we are basically engineer, right? But we do engineering work. But most of the time, what we are like, uh, uh, we are far away from, and that is uh, the leadership quality and how we can build up this leadership quality. That's the most focus of this uh, step program. So we focused on this leadership effectiveness skill. We help students how to like uh, uh, how to uh, uh, adapt with the change management, how to do this interpersonal communication, because most of the time we saw like uh, uh, engineering students don't uh, like feel so shy to initiate a talk to like, uh, like there's a lot of opportunity out there, but you have to take the initiative, go there, talk to someone, like ask for like volunteering activity or ask for any, any, uh, like, uh, uh, any questions, maybe, uh, it's, it's, it's need to be first initiative by you. So that's why interpersonal communication is very much important. And we try to uh, advocate students uh, so that they can uh, overcome these uh, difficulties and then, uh, uh, then shine in their career. 
this is the like a, one highlights that we have recently as uh, this step uh, program is like recently uh, organized by the IEEE Programming Society. We try to highlight as much as possible the uh, like how we are helping students come come to us. We can guide you or we can initiate a program to guide students. So it just like you have to take the initiative. And as a, um, I already mentioned that I'm the IEEE Foreign Society, the Professional Advancement Committee. So uh, it's also a part of this state program. We try to uh, help students, our graduate students, or any professionals, how they can improve in their career, or like how if they're like a, a academic, uh, if they want to be in academy, how they can uh, in, uh, enrich their academic career. If they want to go in industry, how they can uh, enrich their industrial career and how they can bridge in between these two. So th that's the purpose of this committee. Um, IWP for instance, it has this like a spotlight kind of thing, membership. If you're a, if you're an active volunteer, if you're doing so many things for IWP for doing society, they will definitely spotlight you and try to uh, focus your uh, activities, try to give you the platform to speak out. So be uh, be more involved with the society and try to speak out, and then you, you will be get uh, so many uh, uh, benefits, so many uh, opportunities. It just uh, uh, you need to be involved. Uh, these are the IEEE Photon Society Women in India magazines highlights. So far, I have uh, published this uh, uh, writings, uh, this article in the uh, Women in India section. I'm trying to advocate as many as uh, like uh, women that's working in engineering field, especially I'm from Bangladesh, so I'm trying to focus in, uh, on the people from Bangladesh as well, and also uh, people from, not people, like women especially, from other countries as well. I'm, I'm trying to advocate them, I'm trying to folk, like encourage them that uh, how you can believe in yourself and just uh, don't afraid of the challenge and uh, don't be like afraid of the societal norms, just break down those things and go ahead. Uh, this is the article to focus on our like, uh, I have like, a, I took the initiative to form this IEEE Young Professional Affinity Group. So uh, IEEE Young Professional Impact Blog highlights this, uh, uh, our group activities. Also, I have an initiative, this uh, IEEE Photonic Society, uh, Miami chapter. Uh, so like, it's it's like always you, you like we always like ask the question, like how we can do the volunteer and uh, how we can be involved. Sometimes what do you need to do? You need to make the chance for other people to do the volunteer. You have to take the initiative. Uh, so far I took the, like uh, I uh, submit two petition, uh, one is for this young professional and this uh, photon society chapter and successfully I formed these two, uh, two things. One is the affinity group and one is the chapter. So, uh, I took the initiative, I did, uh, I submitted the petition and formed these chapters. Now I'm giving other people the platform to do the volunteers. So it's not like always you have to wait for the volunteer kind of uh, opportunities. You have to take the initiative and create the platform. Uh, super, I have given like several talks. Uh, uh, before that, uh, I was like giving talks for this Miami section as well. And for the IGP recently, I'm uh, advocating on different things. I'm recently uh, selected as IGP uh, recently, uh, uh, diversity and equity and inclusion uh, ad hoc committee members. So we are trying to focus on this, how we can speak out and how we can form like a uh, formalized, how we can uh, this, uh, uh, formalize all the things and uh, narrow down this diversity, equity, and how we can make people feel like you are included. So those kind of things we are like taking the initiative and trying to uh, uh, implement in our uh, like whole reason trip. And uh, as I, my IEEE Photon Society and IEEE Sensor Council Miami section joint chapter is a very new chapter. I just formed it at uh, August. So far, I have like I have three different uh, talks. It's uh, the first one is uh, based on the priorities in self care. It's based on like um, uh, stress management and time management. And then we have arranged one uh, uh, numerical, uh, ancestral numerical. Uh, this. Uh, a uh, software company uh, the, who uh, actively works in this photonic simulation software. 
So th this uh, talks are like very informative. Also, the last talk was like next generation near uh, sub nanometer optical sensing kind of thing. So these are like all uh, technical talks and very informative. So uh, right now we are arranging for the virtual kind of talk, but in future we are planning to have like if the COVID situation is like uh, uh, good enough, we are thinking to have a hybrid uh, different talk, workshop, and other thing. As uh, I believe, uh, for doing society gives so many uh, funding for this chapter, so we are trying to do those things. Uh, my purpose is to highlight this thing to show the students that the, there is like worst opportunity out there. You have to grab the opportunity, take the initiative. It's just not only that uh, you are just applying for this uh, graduate student scholarship you you can apply for the travel grant you can apply for the society chapter fund you can so many option is there you can uh, start working like small like start working on uh, with the small things and then you you will be able to get big big things just it's just a matter of time uh Right now, I'm, just, I'm the chair for this chapter, and my advisor, Dr. Daisy Pala, he's uh, he's working as a like a chapter advisor. And uh, so far, I have tried to give a brief overview of the IEEE Photonics Society's mission and vision, how many award IEEE Photonics Society gives, and uh, how you can apply for the graduate student fellowship award. So if anyone has any question, they can ask me right now or they can email me at my email address and they can connect me with my uh, LinkedIn account as well. So this is all from me. Thank you so much.